Thank you so much. This is the first time that I've ever spoken in an airplane hangar. <laughs> For those of you who read the description of this session, you'll notice that it focused on the idea of environmental sustainability. A big word and a big concept, the idea of living within our means. Today, in a world where personal debt, corporate debt, and trillions of dollars of national debt seems normal, it's hard to realize that there are real limits on what we can do on this finite planet of ours. You've probably heard how it if everybody lived like certain people did, it would take multiple planets to support everybody we have here. I'm not proud to say that I plugged in my own statistics, and if everybody had my life, we would need five planets. How can we fix this problem? I have heard so many great ideas, talks, inspiring visions, and plans for people who are changing our attitudes and our perspectives on environmental sustainability. Through generational change, from parent to child, we can change our attitudes, we can change our perspectives, we can change what matters to us most in life. But I don't study environmental sustainability. I study climate change. And climate change is very different in at least three important ways. I study what climate change means to us in the places where we live. And I also study what we can do about climate change. And these are the three ways why climate change poses a different challenge than environmental sustainability in general. The first reason is because climate change is being caused today for the first time in the history of the planet, it is being caused by human choices. Climate has changed naturally in the past many times. But today, if our climate were being controlled by natural factors, we would be cooling, and instead we are warming faster and faster because of the choices we've made on how we get our energy. Specifically, we get the bulk of our energy from carbon-based fuels, that's coal, gas, and oil. Whenever we burn them, they produce carbon that is wrapping around our planet like an extra blanket, a blanket that we did not need. That blanket is trapping too much of the Earth's heat inside and that is what is causing us to warm. So how is this different from environmental sustainability? Because we're not gonna run out of fossil fuels before we can fix climate. Yes, the days of traditional oil may be limited, but if you go up to the Arctic, we easily have a thousand years worth of fossil fuels up there. So it isn't a case of living within our limits of our available resources, it's a case of not using the resources that we do have. I don't normally speak in venues where that gets applause. <laughs> what is the second way that climate change is different? If I had a dollar for every time I hear, well, if we just fixed X, then we could fix climate. I could fund my entire research program. If we were just all on the same page on the science, then we could fix climate. If we were all on the same page on gender equity, then we could fix climate. If we were all on the same page in religion or even the same uh, version of the Bible, then maybe we could fix climate change. And to that, I say, good luck. <laughs> climate change is urgent. Every year that goes by without coordinated, consistent efforts to wean ourselves off our addiction to a dirty and increasingly dangerous source of energy is a year that increases the risks. It increases the economic risks of climate change. It increases the risks of running out of some of our other resources faster. And it increases the very real risks to human life. 
We cannot afford to wait until we have our ducks in a nice neat row to fix climate. We have to fix it now with the broken and imperfect systems in which we live. Here is the third way that climate is different. Often we get the impression that, okay, well, climate is important, so I need to move it up my list of things I care about. We all have a list of things that we care about. Some of the things on that list relate to ourselves and our family. Others relate to our community. Others relate to issues like global poverty or hunger. Climate change should not be an issue on that list. Because the reason why we care about climate change is because it is impacting all of the things on the list that we already care about today. How can we fix world hunger when since 1980, climate change has been causing $5 billion in crop losses on average every year, most of those losses in countries where people live off $2 a day? We can't. How can we fix global health problems when climate change is altering the spread of diseases and increasing the risk of water contamination? We can't. How can we work towards gender equity? How can we work towards peaceful civil societies when climate change is tipping the balance in failing states, pushing those states over the edge into conflict? And what's the first thing to go in conflict? Health? Education? Women's empowerment? How can we fix those problems if we leave climate change out of the picture? We can't. Trying to fix the issues that we care about today without taking into account climate change is like pouring all of our money, all of our effort, all of our hope and our prayer into a bucket with a hole in the bottom. That hole is climate change and it is getting bigger and bigger every year. You don't have to clap for that. But here's the good news, and this really is good news. The good news is that if we are a human, if we live on this planet, if we care about our family, if we care about our community, if we care about others, even more so if the tenets of our faith are like those of the Christian faith where we believe that God created this world, gave us responsibility to care for every living thing on this planet, and that we are to be known by our love for others, our sacrificial love for others, in the same way that Christ loved us. If that is what we believe we are, then we have all the values we need to care about climate change. We do not... We do not have to instill new values into ourselves, our family, our friends, and our fellow citizens in order to care about climate change. We have those values. All we have to do is connect what is in our hearts to the issue. By connecting our values, we can work to fix this problem in our broken and fractured systems. These solutions will not be ideal. They will not be perfect. Fixing climate change is tough. It is not for idealists and it is not for perfectionists. But it is for each of us who wants a better world. We can fix it through individual actions. The first and simplest thing we can do is step on the carbon scale and measure our footprint. We can do it through working in our communities, our churches, our congregations, our schools, our families. How can we get clean energy? How can we reduce our demand? How can we simplify our lives? How can we do better for each other? We can do it through telling our leaders that we care about these issues and we want them to fix them because we care about the economy, about national defense, about issues of food and water and energy. These are the issues we need to care about to care about climate change, and we do. This can happen because caring about climate change is compatible with our values and because our faith gives us a secret weapon. My favorite Bible verse has nothing to do with the earth, it has nothing to do with creation, it has nothing to do with being green. My favorite verse comes from Timothy, where the Apostle Paul writes to Timothy and says, God has not given us a spirit of fear. What have we been given? We have been given a spirit of power, of love, and, my personal favorite, a sound mind. 
So let's use our sound mind and move forward rooted in love with the knowledge that we are shielded from fear and inspired by a hope for a better future. Thank you.